Hi, Marco here. Welcome to my backyard. I am sitting here with the, uh, behind the camera is Adam McLean, my partner in the youth cartel. And next to me, and you'll meet him in a second, is uh, Pastor Brian Berry, <laughs> the student ministries pastor, or excuse me, it's a fancy name now, the generations uh. pastor at the church that we go to. So uh, Brian is actually our pastor and we his loyal <laughs> subjects. Uh, we're really excited because Brian has written a wonderful new book that I'm intentionally holding upside down. Thank you, Adam. Uh, called Criticism Bites. Um, and it's a, re it's a really excellent book. I know we're being silly, but it really is good. So was Brian's other book. Um, and we want to tell you about it and introduce you to our friend, Brian Berry. What up? <laughs> okay, Brian. Uh, tell us why you wrote Criticism Bites. Criticism Bites. I wrote Criticism Bites because people are always upside down. No, I wrote Criticism Bites because I had um, this sense early on in ministry that it was going to be fun, and I loved it, and it was great, and I had this habit in my life long before the days of Google of clipping articles, and so I was a collector, and I gathered all kinds of things, and I would collect it on whatever subjects I thought I needed to talk about or deal with or I thought I might want to resonate with, and I found myself increasingly getting more and more articles on the subject of criticism and holding on to them and devouring them. And I'd see an article on it or I'd see an entire leadership magazine on it. And I would just devour this and I would go to friends and I would ask them and I would go to mentors. And I just, I had no idea that navigating criticism was such an intense skill or necessary part of ministry, of youth ministry, of even especially post-adoption on parenting. Oh my word, people would say the harshest things. And sometimes I would receive criticism from someone who I desperately needed it from. And sometimes I would receive it from somebody who just seemed like they just hated me. And sorting through that required a whole level of discernment. I just didn't feel like I had a resource for it. But you, you don't think that people in ministry actually receive any criticism, do you? Oh, no, 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 just me. That's what I thought. <laughs> I just really wanted to journal my own yeah. experiences and then occasionally you and, know, help And some... why do you think it is that you personally receive so much? <laughs> because I suck. Criticism. Um, <laughs> which actually was supposed yeah. to be the title, right? Yeah, it was supposed to be titled, You Suck, but that title sucks. Uh, and so, plus, I decided that as well, like, if I say, hey, Mark, I got a book for you. You suck. Then it was a little hard to pass off to a volunteer or somebody who really needed it if they thought you were telling them something other than, dude, criticism bites and this might help you. In so, fact, Brian, give us a story. I'm cutting you off. Give us a story of a time, just one of the stories of a time you received some criticism and why it impacted you. Um, well, we have this day in the church world that we call Pastor Appreciation Day. And it is, it's epic. I mean, the, everybody in the world knows about it. Hallmark has a special section for it, Valentine's Day then. Anyway, I, I, don't, I don't know, they didn't have it. I never, it's one of those days that you never know is coming until some old lady puts a little note in your like box at work or some homeschool family brings you a special gift that they made, cookies or something. A say, knitted sweater. A knitted sweater, exactly. A jumper. Here, here, here you go, that's great. And so this was one of those days, I didn't know that it was, it was that day at all. It was nowhere on my radar. Um, I, and uh, one of the guys in our church, one of our volunteers, heard about it and gathered a huge stack of cards. And then from? we did from, I don't know, like blank cards that just had nothing, cute little like scripture verses on the front and stuff. And then passed them out to all of the students in our program on Sunday morning. And they did it between services or before service or whatever. We just did one service. And so after the service, I came in. And we're doing our program and we're getting ready to dismiss. And he goes, hey, time out like we're going to have a birthday or something. Comes in, says, we want to appreciate our pastor. Tells me it's Pastor Appreciation Day. And hands me this huge stack of notes. And I was like, wow. And I was kind of shocked and surprised. And I was like, this is awesome. Thank you so much. And they prayed over me and we dismissed the service. And I thanked people and said, wow, it was overwhelming. And thank you. And so I went home and uh, I sat down in a chair and grabbed a cup of coffee and began to read through these. And they were, they were great. And then I read one that was not great. It, it literally went in and it ripped everything about me. It ripped about ministry. It ripped about student leadership. It ripped about how I dealt with pastors. It ripped, it ripped into everything. And it's signed at the end, thanks for nothing. And then it has no signature. And this anonymous letter sat with me for months and I was young, I was in my early 20s, and I just wrestled with this thing. And I didn't, I didn't know whether to bury it or burn it or hold on to it. And um, I, it's the only one I still have. I still have that exact note. The rest of the stack is gone. And I began to ask myself, why is that? Why, 
why when criticism comes does it bite so hard and do I hold on to it for so long and, and why do other forms even encouragement tend to go I just go by the way say oh I don't know where that note went I don't know where that birthday card is but this one harsh thing I held on to man we need to have like a cremation ceremony for that card I think Ooh. take it out to the desert let's do it and Flame blow it, it up yes yeah. Hey, uh, Brian connects with why this is such an important issue to us as ministry people, volunteer, youth worker, paid person, any other role in the church. It's really a book that uh, is written for a broader audience than just youth workers. Uh, and then it gives tons of very practical, pragmatic help, how to respond, um, how to um, deal specifically with emails versus other things, what to do with anonymous notes, which you haven't followed your own advice on that one. <laughs> um, and so I really want to encourage you to go to the youthcartel.com store and pick up multiple copies, five, 10, 20 <laughs> copies of Criticism Bites Hard. Have a great day.